Righto, we're going to call this video um, changing the voltage on an IC775 DSP. This one's coming from the US and uh, let's have a bit of a look at exactly what's needed to uh, make it work on 240 volts. Definitely do not plug the IEC plug in with a 240 volt uh, connection before doing what we're about to have a look at. Things will go bang. So let's have a look. Let's get the top cover off. Okay, so if you've never seen inside an IC775 DSP before, you're about to. This is inside the IC775 and they're quite a uh, well laid out unit. Lots of space, lots of um, area to uh, deal with. And of course, you can see this unit, big unit, right here is their power supply unit. Now, they tell you to take the bottom cover off. I have a look, I'm not sure you do need to take the bottom cover off. We probably will just for the heck of it. But um, let's have a bit of a look. I decided whether you want to take the bottom cover off or not. Probably a good idea to have a look in and we can see what filters we've got in there. And um, we've got the SSB wide filter in there, the CW narrow filter. Uh, this has obviously got the DSP uh, fitted as well. And uh, yeah, look, this is um, extremely nice modular construction. So there we go. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can maybe change it from 110 to 240. Okay, there's some internal screws to do as well, but we'll just get um, six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the six one? Six! <laughs> I had to think then. <laughs> okay, so this is all our plates and bits and pieces. Now, we've got some internal screws to do as well. Now, for the life of me, they actually get you to um, uh, undo all the screws on these. Uh, this is the tuner unit here. And... Uh, uh, then we've got here, this is uh, the PA unit uh, in the middle, and they get you to unscrew these. But for the life of me, I've got the power supply in my hand <laughs> that we're going to have to modify. So I don't know why they, un they get you to go that far. Um, I, I, for the life of me, I, that bit I don't understand. doesn't matter. Let's pull the uh, cover off the power supply and let's have a look at the modification. Okay, so 16 screws basically around this case of the power supply. And uh, until they show me any different, I can't see once again why we've had to um, uh, <laughs> make uh, undo these units here. These are all just sitting there at the moment. It, it actually says pull them out. And I'm like, um, maybe, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> not sure what you guys are on about. All right. So let's have a look here. Um, we can see down here. I haven't even read the manual. I can see very obviously down here. Oh, hang on. Light. I'm not actually in my workshop at the moment. I'm actually just in my little radio room but you can see down there that little white lead goes down to 120 volts and I dare say we'll find a spot over here for 240 volts which is sitting just down there okay so basically we're we're pulling this fella off here and um, making sure you know no power is connected to anything at the moment and we are popping that fella around over to the other side um, I'll do that off camera because I think I'm going to have trouble showing you. Oh, let's give it a go. Let's have a look. Oh, amazing what you do with camera in one hand and fingers holding things. But yeah, okay. So basically that lead goes over from one side to the other. Uh, and, and just to show you, this is the... See where it says remove the seven screws? Um, and so basically there's our power supply there. There's our PA stage. There's our tuner unit. Well, they're basically saying pull out the tuner and you know undo all this take the speaker out yeah i don't know unless i'm missing something which we may find out in a second um, but basically we're at the stage over here which says let's move that 120 volt over to 240 volts um, and um, then basically uh, change the fuse and put it all back together again so yeah look just as a bit of a thing for the icom uh, guys uh, not sure why you said this all they, they want this cleared out so that you can work on the power supply but as you can see the power supply once you undo all the screws they say um, well that's um that sort of uh comes out beautifully so we'll just disregard that for the moment we'll call that a little icom sort of uh, procedure that they do the way they do don't forget um on the front here you've got these are your um 20 28 volts and um uh, i think there was some 28 and oh, 28 and 12 was it 28 and 12 or 28 and 5? Oh, can't remember now. Um, yeah, maybe they even say on here. No, they don't. Um, these are a third party supply. These weren't made by ICOM. These were put out to tender. So there's, um, it's really hard to get circuit information. And see, so even you can see from their branding there, it's a 
what is it? A Rugoon or something. I can't even read that. Anyway, um, but yes, definitely a third party supply that costs zillions of dollars if you could ever get one um, because of the fact that it's third party. And um, third party people don't tend to keep giving you things forever and a day. They tend to get on and move on to the next thing. But an um, interesting situation came up some time back with an IC7700. And I was pretty wrong on this one. I sort of said that it was very complex to replace a 7700 power supply to a mate of mine. And the truth was, no, it's not. It's actually not. It's just a matter of getting the voltage and current. It's, I mean, there's, as this proves here, this power supply here is third partied by anybody. You know, it doesn't matter who they are. There's a big spot here. If this power supply went and died, at the end of the day, we need 28 volts. It's, you know, X amount of current. And we need um, 12 or 5. I can't remember. I think it was 5, actually. Anyway, can't remember. Sorry. Um, have to have to relook that one up what the uh, the outputs were on those uh, but uh, I do know that for the 200 watts they were 28 volts so yeah virtually you could get a meanwhile power supply I'm sure and put it in here and you know tap off the right voltages and the right currents and and you know um, it may not look as nice on the back though that's the thing is that this here is um, sorry the back meaning this bit um, you know to get that size there you'd almost um, take this case and try and actually utilize this back plate if you were going to third party a supply into it. All right, well, let's um, put another fuse in it and uh, put it back together, see if it even works, eh? Okay, uh, just a quick mention of why we changed the fuse. Uh, obviously, at 250 volts uh, input, our rating is um, under half of that of what it would be at 125 volts. So um, currently, they've got a 12 amp fuse in there for 110 volts. Uh, if we left that in there and we struck a problem, uh, we, you know, really are not being very smart. So the reason we put a 5 amp fuse in there is just to make sure that we're keeping the fuse acting as a safeguard. Jeez, my light's very terrible here. This room is definitely not my workshop, is it? Oh, boy, that's terrible. All right, that's better. Anyway, as you can see, yeah, the rating is, is very, um, they're quite articulate about that. 12 amps is um, what it's uh, come out from the US. All right, let's uh, put it all back together. Now we've got another fuse in there and uh, put a few screws back in and see if she fires up with a 240-volt IEC lead. Okay, so the mystery of why to take out these modules is all about this plate on the back here. You've got two little grooves and then the plate's got to go back onto the back here and then you've got to be able to move this module around. So if you don't pull the screws from the module, you'll never get this back in. So to be fair to Icon, they did have a reason. I still don't know about this one. I think they're just taking the screws out of this one to give you a bit more room to play on that side. Uh, but yes, definitely you'll need to take the screws out of this module. I don't know about this one. I reckon you'd get away with the, the gap that's there. But you know, if you want to be 100% sure, you can just pull the screw like I did on this one here. But yep, that's the trick as to why you've got to pull the screws uh, it wasn't about access to this or anything. It's about getting this back plate back on. So um, <laughs> there you go. Okay, I'm going to change my approach on this. You definitely need to be able to get this out the way. Um, and they are right. You just need that little bit of extra room to be able to get this plate on the back. So they are 100% correct. Whilst you may not, you know, uh, go and undo all these leads and pull the whole thing out the way, you do need that little bit of space to get across. So Icon, my apologies. Um, definitely follow their... Uh, directions about removing all the screws because they're right you'll never get it back together again otherwise it just didn't look that hard but it really is millimeter accuracy to get it back together again otherwise one last little tip because this is all going back together perfectly now the last little tip i want to give you is leave the two screws on the bottom there out while you're putting it all back together so basically you put the line up all back together with those two screws out on the bottom there so uh, one two leave those out just to give yourself that bit of flexibility where your problem becomes is this little bracket here getting it over to there needs these little ones to be there now to get those into place they've got to be down lower which means raise the power supply raise the power supply up put the slots in and uh, then push it all together put the screws back in <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations, Dicom. I must admit, I was very suspect of your uh, instructions up here with uh, uh, some of this. But no, you do need to pull every screw they said. They're 100% correct. But did you have to pull the bottom cover off? No, definitely not. <laughs> I'm going to at least have that win, but uh, it's a very small win. So all back together, just remember, uh, two, only two screws for the speaker there. Uh, you've got one screw holds in the antenna tuner, two screws at the front there. Uh, that hold in the uh, RF stage two screws on the uh, power supply on the back section you just got to put back in um, one two three four five 
and number six. Sorry, I just fit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, probably didn't do that very well then. One, two, yep, <laughs> three, four, five, six. Okay, so there, there are your uh, six screws on the back that go in. And then basically uh, your covers can go on and you can plug your normal 240 volt IEC lead in. So we'll do just that and see if it goes kabang. One last comment, uh, check your movement around here. See if we can get a bit more light there on that. Check your movement, your switch. Make sure that switch is moving correctly and that it feels like it's actually um, moving on the switch like it should do, which that feels okay. We'll find out in a second, I suppose. Okay, so for the final little moment, I haven't put the uh, top cover back on yet, but um, let's just, before we, you know, sort of, okay. All right, so 240 volts running. We'll have to do a full test on this yet, um, but uh, this is a very simple changeover of voltage, as you can see. And um, uh, I noticed missing with it, I've put a little RCA lead on the back, um, but uh, there was no RCA lead for... Um, for uh, the um, receive in, receive out. Now, when you hook it up, you won't get anything. Um, so I, I just quickly put one of those on just to uh, test and power up with. But uh, we'll do full transmit test, receive test on this um, uh, fairly soon. Actually, we might hook it up to this fella here. I've been thinking about interfacing the 775 with the uh, 2.5 KFX for a bit of fun. So we might have a bit of a, a fun video on that. All right, so that's pretty much how that you do the swap over from... Um, 110 to 240 volts it's it's not difficult it's just a matter of just take your time and just um, follow definitely follow icom's instructions to the letter um, every screw they said that has to come out does make your life so much easier so uh, i was a little bit not sure of that initially as you kind of uh, gathered but no the more i sort of see what they're up to uh yep yep no i think they're on the ball okay 73s from vk3 charlie mike thanks very much uh, certainly uh, been good to uh you know at least get this thing to fire up how much it does after this now we need to find out so we'll make that a separate video i haven't even tried to transmit on it yet so um, we'll see what happens there um that's um david shulman's very good at checking his gear of course but uh we'll uh, we'll see how it all goes all right a follow-up video but that'll do for now on the uh 110 to 240 volt conversion uh certainly uh, a fairly easy task 73s